Developing right now, what seemed like a victory for Kellogg's workers has turned into a big disappointment. Elvis Presley Enterprises has filed plans to develop a new hotel at Graceland. The hotel would service out-of-town visitors to the King's Castle. Now, during uh, Local Memphis Live, I actually donated myself just to kind of prove how simple the process was. Everything from signing in at registration to going through those medical questions to the actual donation process took about 30 minutes. So that's how quick it is. <laughs> like a 12-year-old. I'm just saying, I have to set this up. You gotta set it up. The finishing touches are being put on the preparations for the royal visit to the Bluff City. That's right. Prince. The Arkansas National Guard has been called in to help those storm victims. Soldiers are assisting with traffic and medevac operations in areas that have seen the most damage. The first units were put into action around 10 last night. Commanders say additional units could possibly be called up. Troops and equipment are being routed to support Mayflower and Valonia. Welcome back to Local 24 Midday. Again, we're here back at the phone bank trying to gather money, trying to gather donations for those folks in Tupelo, Mississippi, who've gone through so much. You can see our volunteers here with the Red Cross who've been here all morning, and right now I can happily say we're almost at $3,000, so I want to thank all of the folks here in the Mid-South for opening up their hearts, digging deep into their wallets, and as you can see, uh, all of these volunteers here pretty pumped and uh, pretty thankful for all of those folks out there in the Mid-South that are willing to give, and uh, joining me right now is Kim Cribb uh, with the Red Cross, and uh, Kim, just tell me first off the importance of of folks uh, digging down deep and donating to this great cause. Well, with so many events to choose from on this 4th of July holiday, some families may opt to find something a bit more laid back with the neighborhood feel to it. That one time that he did that thing? Right, it was oh. so good. So awesome. <laughs> and remember to follow us on Twitter at Local Memphis for all the latest news, weather, sports, and glee updates throughout the day. <laughs> Local in Tennessee this morning, the city of Brownsville will swear in its new mayor this week. He's the city's first ever African-American mayor. Now the city is about 60 miles northeast of Memphis. These state-of-the-art operating suites were opened this past April. The overall goal is to make for a safer surgical procedure for patients. State-of-the-art state lights. Torrance upstairs. Jones, the manager of the general surgery department here at Baptist Memphis Hospital, gave us a tour of these three new minimally invasive operating suites. One of the key features are these overhead lights used during surgery. And yeah, it doesn't penetrate any heat, so no shadows at all. So yes, that's a... Uh, that's a high demand with the surgeons. These rooms are not only equipped with state-of-the-art surgical equipment, but with the touch of a button, the suite can literally be transformed into a calming spa-like environment for patients. It's all thanks to the soft music that can be played from the room speakers and relaxing images played on one of the room's HD monitors. This equipment also helps to make surgical procedures more efficient. The speed of the surgery, this decreases time in surgery because everything runs so efficiently with this equipment. Uh, since we put this stuff in, we can cut operating time down. Baptist Memphis is the first hospital in the area with these sorts of surgical advances. There's very few places in the country that can mimic this. Dr. Steve Bierman, professor of surgery at the University of Tennessee, says the design of the rooms provides surgeons with an environment that will allow for high-quality care for patients. So it makes the procedure safer for the patient. Our patients really get state-of-the-art care. We're told that about 25 procedures are done in these rooms weekly, and doctors tell us that they're pleased with these added tools and how they've helped to make their jobs more effective. Rodney Dunnigan, Local 24 Good Day. Former University of Memphis basketball player Trey Draper is known on campus and in the community for his big smile and his positive attitude. Now, he spent four years as a walk-on for the Tigers, and after graduating this past year, he took a position as an assistant coach at the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. Now, everything in his life seemed to be on the right track. That is until he was sidetracked with a recent medical diagnosis. Now, a rare eye disorder could affect not only his sight, but his future. We look more into this issue in this morning's Local Health Alert. Trey Draper has been in love with the game of basketball since he was a kid. When he first picked up a ball, he knew somehow he wanted to be involved with the game for the rest of his life. He decided coaching was his way. As a coach, that's what I want to do. I want to be able to impact young ones' lives and keep some of them off the street because they actually changed my life. His passion started here on the court at Mitchell High. The love, determination, and hard work eventually led him to the University of Memphis, where he was a four-year walk-on member of the team. Well, it was just a blessing just to be able to be a part of it. Coach Pastner, you know, he told me he knew what I wanted to do, and I wanted to be a coach, so 
before I signed and before I, you know, took that journey. He told me that he'll help me build to where I wanted to get to, and I was just forever grateful for that. Draper just graduated this past year and recently took a job as a graduate assistant at the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. Everything in his life was smooth sailing until a routine eye exam led to a troubling discovery. My mother wanted me to do some, you know, just random, just tests, checkups. Uh, went to the eye doctor, and it came back that I might have a eye, eye a diagnosis called keratoconus. You know, I got a second opinion on it, and, and that's what it was. Draper was diagnosed with keratoconus, a degenerative disorder of the eye that can cause a substantial distortion of vision. To simplify it, most your eye is supposed to be shaped like a basketball. Mine's kind of shaped like a football. And so what the surgeon would do is, is going to try to reform the cornea to go back to being a circle. That way, it will, your vision won't be blurred by certain things and just something like that. that that's the best way that I can put it. The cause of this disorder is unknown. Doctors at Memphis Eye and Cataract Associates referred him to experts in Indianapolis for treatment. He now has to undergo two experimental surgeries in order to hopefully correct the problem. The first this week. Draper says the outpouring of support he's received from U of M basketball fans and the Memphis community in general has been overwhelming. For now, he plans to keep that smile and keep being positive, hopeful. This is just a bump in the road. I'm not the type to complain, you know. I know what I have, and, you know, it's not a pity party. I just have to do what I have to do to survive and get by it because, and I'm just blessed we was able to catch it early because who knows if we caught it five, ten years down the line or maybe who knows what could happen. The experimental surgeries that Trey needs are not covered by insurance, with his first surgery actually set for this coming Wednesday, July 9th. Now, each surgery has a cost of about $2,000, and he will need at least two of these procedures. Trey and his parents will have to make four trips to Indianapolis to meet with eye specialists there, in addition to the cost of those surgeries. If you would like to donate to help offset some of those costs of the surgeries and travel for the family, you can make a donation. Most folks probably don't know, but right here in the Mid-South, we have one of the best trap shooting teams in the country. The Arlington High School Trappers have won four out of the last five national titles. Their coach calls them, get this, the Yankees of trap shooting. We recently went to a practice to check out the kids for ourselves. Take a look at what we discovered in this week's local cool kid report. This, as you can imagine, takes plenty of skill. Not only hand-eye coordination, but the timing and patience to know when to pull the trigger. It's just a mental aspect, really, with most of what you do. And anything that you do can upset how you shoot. Ready? Y'all too. These kids with the Arlington High School Trappers are some of the country's best. You have to focus on each bird at a time, and you can't worry about what you've already shot. That's the main thing. You have to know you're going to hit each bird, and you can't worry at all about what's been. The team has won four out of the last five Scholastic Shooting Sports Foundation national titles. It's easy to see why. The Arlington Trappers have become a national powerhouse. We've been successful at every level. Uh, we've won most of the district championships in the last nine years, most of the regional championships. We've missed two regionals, and we've won a, state cha uh, a couple state championships and placed in the state many times. Oh. These kids Good shot. have put in hours and weeks of work to become some of the best. I've done it since my sophomore year of high school. Mm -hmm. My brother started with it, and I decided to go along with them and try it out, and <laughs> I love it. That hard work has not only helped to make them champions, but they're proving to be cool kids as well. Gotta beat eight. 